building your first PC can be an intimidating prospect, and that's before you even put the bloody thing together. What parts should you buy? What do you budget for? How do you future-proof yourself? Where do you find those sweet, sweet deals? Well, whether you're building your first PC or your fifth, hopefully the tips in this video should help you out. First, you need to think, what am I gonna use this machine for? If you're watching this video, likely it's gonna be a lot of gaming, but think bigger. PCs are so versatile. Do you wanna start live streaming? Are you gonna jump into video production? All these aspects are going to influence the pieces that you eventually put in your rig. If you're doing video production or thinking about streaming, you're going to want a beefier CPU. These days, both AMD and Intel offer great and affordable CPUs with six and even eight cores. And if you're going to be streaming off the same machine or processing a lot of video files, try to keep a high core count in your build. If you want something that's got a lot of power behind it, but still need to stick to a budget, then AMD's Ryzen CPUs have been a godsend. If gaming is going to be your focus though, and I'm assuming it is, then we have the question as to what is your expectation when it comes to graphics? 1080p with 144Hz refresh rate, or do you want to go into the big leads of 4K resolution games? Decide what your focus is on when it comes to resolution or frame rates, as this is going to factor in when it comes to what graphics card you pair up with your CPU. The world is weird and money doesn't grow on trees. With that being said, you would gotta keep your budget in mind. The aim of the game is to get the slickest, best gaming experience you can without ideally having to sell half your organs to make it happen. If you want the best gaming performance right off the bat, then you're probably going to want to spend more on a better video card and going for a CPU that's a bit lighter on the wallet. And with the 30 series just announced from Nvidia, the 3070 and 3080 are looking like incredible options for building a high powered rig on a budget. For example, if you were looking at 4K gaming on a PC with something like an RTX 2080 and an Intel Core i5 10600K, that's going to fare better than one with an RTX 2070 and an Intel i9 at 10900K. That is because the bigger resolutions like 4K gaming tend to be GPU bound, meaning that at the higher end they're less reliant on CPU and pull more from the graphics card. So if that's your goal, you may want to go heavier on your graphics. At lower resolutions, such as at 1080p, more emphasis tends to be placed on the CPU in order to get the highest FPS as the GPU is chilling with a lighter workload. If you have a high refresh rate 1080p display, maybe don't go so hard on a GPU and give your CPU a little more love, especially if you're on a budget. If this is your first foray into PC building, you have to remember that you are way more likely to replace individual parts when you're upgrading than you are swap out the whole machine. Because as beautiful as these amazing RGB boxes are, they're not cheap. Do you want the best gaming performance now, or are you planning for future upgrades? So when working with a limited budget, you need to consider where your money is best spent to get the best performance, but you should also think about how you can make your machine last. What I mean by this is if you want to make your system as a whole last longer and limit the upgrades you'll have to consider down the line, invest in a solid motherboard that has the most recent socket type and chipset and pair that with a good CPU. This would have to cut into your GPU expense, but if you're thinking ahead, GPUs tend to have newer, better versions more frequently than any other PC component for gaming performance. If you invest in a strong CPU now and a decent video card like an Nvidia 3070, you'll be in a really good place when you're eager to upgrade to even bigger cards. And by no means does this mean you'll be sacrificing performance altogether, because even mid-range video cards put out really, really good numbers when it comes to gaming performance. For example, currently Intel Core 9th gen CPUs are incredible performers, but since the release of the 10th gen, a new socket type was also introduced. Going with 9th gen now may put you in a tough position when you do want to upgrade your CPU and start finding that the parts you invested in a few years back are no longer working together in harmony. AMD Ryzen socket types and chipsets are a lot more fluid in terms of compatibility, but it's still an important aspect to keep in mind. Also, upgrading motherboards and CPUs is just way more of a headache than swapping out video cards. As much as it makes me feel like an old man to say this, but HDDs just ain't the one anymore, Chief. Unless you're doing massive video projects or you really need large amounts of storage, get a solid state. They're way more affordable these days, they've still got a great capacity to them, and they're just faster. You want them loading speeds? 
You don't want to sit around twiddling your thumbs waiting for the loading screen to tick along. So as solid state drives have become way more affordable over the past few years, it goes without saying that you should invest in those when it comes to your main source of storage in your PC. If you can push your budget far enough, NVMe SSDs are the best form of storage right now. They're a luxury, sure, but if you're keen on load times and instantaneous boot ups, they'll be your best friend. A good combo is a relatively smaller NVMe SSD for the OS and your most demanding or frequently played games and a SATA SSD for everything else. And honestly, they're all really bloody fast anyway, so I promise you when you inevitably use your high-end gaming PC for playing Minecraft, those chunks will load faster than you can think. Now this is a lesson that I have learned the hard way, and that's when it comes to your power supply. Don't cheap out on it. For two reasons, that is. One, you want to future-proof yourself. Two, if it blows up, it will likely take the rest of the computer with it. That one second-hand power supply ended up costing me 600 quid. When it comes to the less, let's say, glamorous parts, there's a temptation to cheap out and cut a few corners so you can put more pennies towards that next level of GPU. But it's better to be safe than sorry when it comes to your power supply. Higher end components tend to take up more wattage, so keep that in mind. Especially when it's time to upgrade to a beefier GPU, it's good to have extra room in the wattage. Besides, a power supply is also a huge pain in the ass when it comes to swapping out PC parts, and all those moments you're up in the guts of the machine with a screwdriver are potential epic gamer moments going to waste. When I first got into building my own PCs, someone was kind enough to point me in the direction of PC Part Picker. And that website, it's a gem. It's so useful. Oh, my days. PC Part Picker is such a gem. Honestly, anyone and everyone building a machine should use it. Now, I'm used to sourcing different retailers, comparing prices manually, or, or simply relying on Newegg or Scan for buying PC components whenever I've built machines in the past. But that's all been made easier with PC Part Picker, a site that aggregates prices across multiple retailers and tidies them up for you to browse. This has honestly helped me save hundreds of pounds over the builds I've done in the past. This video is not sponsored by PC Power Picker. Its best feature though is its compatibility checker, which has even saved my ass a few times, and it is invaluable for the first time builders. It will compare all the parts you've added to your listing and give you a heads up if there's any issue with things not working together, if you'll need to update parts when they arrive, or even if you've got enough wattage in the power supply. It also acts as a neat listing tool that organizes the categories of components and helps you compile your roster of parts. It's not perfect and you'll need to double check to make sure that it's not listing some outdated components, but it really is an incredible tool to use to ensure you're getting the best bang for your bucks. Now those are some of our overarching pieces of advice when it comes to building your very own gaming rig. I know there's a few of you out there that have been toying with the idea now that the next generation of gaming is nearly upon us. There is a huge amount of hype for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, but I've not forgotten about you, my fellow PC nerds. And that is why every week we are going to bring you a video entirely focused on PC gaming, whether that's the niche games, the hardware, the tech, the peripherals, and everything in between. So if you, like me, choose a keyboard and mouse as your weapon of choice, you're going to want to subscribe so you don't miss our next video. I'll see you then.